Leader of the People's Labour Party, Dr. Timothy Harris, has slammed his detractors and members of his party who have been critical of his leadership, even as the party elected a new executive at its inaugural convention on Saturday. In the days leading up to the convention, Deputy Leader Sam Condor was critical of the event being held on the weekend, citing that if a new executive was elected and the current executive booted out, they would pursue legal action. But at Saturday's convention held at the Tabernacle Recreational Grounds, the PLP leader said the hosting of the national convention fell in line with the party's constitution, and he chided the defecting members for not showing up. We gave every member, we gave every member notice of this convention in accordance with the constitution which we had in 2013. All... I repeat, all of our founding members and executive members were notified way back in February of this convention. They were made aware and they ought to have known that the party's constitution, which one of our founders, a lawyer, wrote himself, required us to hold the convention in March. Dr. Harris was returned as National Party leader. Senator Akila Byron Nisbet was elected the new National Deputy Leader. Other appointments include Warren Thompson as National Chairman, Craig Tuckett returned as National Deputy Chairman, Matilla Williams, the new National Secretary, Christoph Griot as Deputy Secretary, Victor Earl as Treasurer, Claudette Thompson as Deputy Treasurer, and Alexis Nisbet as the National Party Organizer. Sonia Henry and Tashana Norford will serve as the representative of the women's arm of the party, while Manassas Huggins and Damian Weeks will serve as representatives of the youth arm. Donald Keynes and Heston Hamm were elected to serve as National Party trustees. The PLP leader reiterated allegations that those within the party who are critical of his leadership were only doing so because he would not give in to their request to pay them exorbitant sums of money from public coffers. So when you hear a man comes to the party and he says, I want a consultancy now to do work in the Ministry of Health, but he going to cost you, you know. He going to cost you near a half a million dollars in one blow. More than half a million dollars in one blow to do a consultancy in the Ministry of Health. I have to say, Lord, not just so. Not just so. We have to ask a question. And that is why we say that some of these people want to play bingo with the National Treasury. And I, as a finance minister, have to say, well, if you get B, and you get the I, and you get the N, and you get the G, you're not going to get the O. Though not mentioning any names, these allegations were also made earlier this year at a national town hall meeting by Dr. Harris, and were probably aimed at former press secretary and one of the founding members of the PLP, Clecton Phillip, who has since become an avowed critic of the Prime Minister. The other staunch critic is now former party chairman Douglas Watley. Dr. Harris declared that the PLP would remain a viable partner in the Team Unity Coalition and the St. Kitts and Nevis political landscape, despite opposition from his detractors. Having chosen to up out, they should not now stand in the way of the new group of persons inspired and courageous enough to say forward on with the PLP and forward on with Team Unity. The inaugural event was attended by hundreds of party members and supporters, including Deputy Prime Minister Sean Richards, Senior Minister and Premier of Nevis Van Samory, other members of the Federal Cabinet, and members of the Diplomatic and Consular Corps. The PLP, launched in June 2013, is one of three political parties that make up the Team Unity government, the other two being the People's Action Movement of St. Kitts and the Nevis-based Concerned Citizens Movement. 
We'll have more reports on the convention and subsequent news items. Reporting for SKN Newsline, I'm Tony Frederick Armstrong. Health and food authorities in St. Kitts and Nevis have imposed a ban on the importation of meat and meat products from Brazil in wake of the rotten meat scandal from that country. A release from the Health and Food Safety Advisory Committee comprising the Ministries of Health and Agriculture, Department of Consumer Affairs, Bureau of Standards, and Customs and Excise Department said after an urgent meeting on Thursday, it was decided that a temporary ban be placed on the importation of all animal and animal products from Brazil. The committee said it lost confidence in that country's certification process for the export of meat. It was also decided to remove and withdraw from the shelves all corned beef imported from and originating in Brazil for detention until they have received more information on the specific batch numbers and companies that are implicated in the packaging of rotten beef in that country. These precautionary measures are recommended to protect the general population from potentially tainted products, the committee said. Jamaica and Trinidad and Tobago were two of the first countries in the Caribbean to impose bans on Brazilian meat. News out of Jamaica is that a trade war is looming between Jamaica and Brazil because of the ban, with Brazil calling for an immediate removal of the ban. The Brazilian embassy in Jamaica has argued that the meat in question has not been imported to Jamaica, but Jamaica has maintained its position and the ban. China, the European Union, and Canada have all announced partial or full import bans on Brazilian meat, though China has since removed the ban. Caribbean food manufacturer Grace Kennedy, in a statement, has assured customers in a press release that its corned beef products are not made with the tainted meat from Brazil, though it imports meat from that country. The company in a news release said they have been working non-stop to get answers in relation to the issue and can confidently state that the factories which supply corned beef to Grace Kennedy are not a part of the current investigation by Brazilian authorities. The company said they have reviewed the information provided by Brazil's Secretariat of Animal and Plant Health, SDA, of the Ministry of Agriculture, Livestock and Food Supply and are satisfied that the corned beef is not among the items under scrutiny. At Najico, the things that matter to you matter to us. Like knowing you're fully covered after an accident. The security of your home and everything in it that means so much to you. And knowing that even when the weather does its worst, you and your family are covered. At Najico, we're about much more than just insurance. We're about the big things and the small things that mean everything. If everyday low prices and quality products matter to you, then come to Consulés on Bush Road, number 72, St. Martin. At Consulés, you can buy the highest quality food and household products, frozen foods, dairy products, snacks, laundry and cleaning products, housewares, and just about every other thing under the sun. Our customer service is just simply the best. So kids need the shoppers. Visit www.costyouless.com or visit our store on St. Martin and we'll help you ship your items. Cost you less. Your best value warehouse store. Former Governor General of St. Kitts and Nevis, Sir Cuthbert Montreville Sebastian, has died. Sir Cuthbert died on Saturday at the age of 95, just days after the burial of former Governor Sir Proven Innes. Sir Cuthbert served as the second Governor General of St. Kitts and Nevis from 1996 to 2013. He was Chief Medical Officer of St. Kitts and Nevis from 1980 to 1983. From 1962 to 1966, he pursued training at the Dundee Royal Infirmary Scotland in obstetrics and gynaecology. Sir Cuthbert was a rear gunner during World War II in the Royal Canadian Air Force, captain surgeon in the St. Kitts and Nevis Defence Force, local physician to His Royal Highness the Prince of Wales, Prince Charles, when His Highness visited St. Kitts in 1973. Sebastian received the Auxiliary Forces Efficiency Decoration and was made an Officer of the Order of the British Empire, OBE, Civil Division, from Queen Elizabeth II in 1969. He was knighted as a Knight Grand Cross of the Most Distinguished Order of St. Michael and St. George in 1996 and was made a Knight Grace of the Most Venerable Order of St. John of Jerusalem. Dalhousie University, where he studied medicine, honored him with an honorary doctorate of laws in 1998 and in 2005 he received an honorary doctorate from Mount Allison University. In 2002, he received an honorary fellowship of the Royal College of Surgeons of Edinburgh in Scotland for his outstanding career and service to humanity in the field of medicine. Prior to the Edinburgh Award, he received an FRCS in London. In 2005, the College of Arms granted him his personal coat of arms. Reporting for SKN Newsline, I'm Tony Frederick Armstrong. It was a send-off apt for a legend. 
Hundreds came out to bid farewell to former governor of the Associated State of St. Kitts, Nevis, and Anguilla, Soprobin Ellsworth Innes, at a state funeral on Thursday at the Wesley Methodist Church, Bastyr, with full military honors. The day was declared a half-holiday so many could pay their final respects to a man hailed as a historian, a statesman, and a beloved son of the soil. Prime Minister Dr. Timothy Harris said Soprobin made significant contributions to the nation, not for recognition, but for love of country. Tributes from near and far asserts him as a patriotic citizen whose value was immense to the development of the nation. Opposition leader Dr. Denzel Douglas said Soprobin played a critical role in the development of the country at very critical periods in civil development and historical development. His contribution was not only on a national level but also in the church community, particularly the Methodist Church, which he served as a lay preacher. Soprobin also served at the Brimstone Hill Heritage Society, and tributes at the funeral came from Bishop Otto Wade of the Methodist Church, Val Henry, Mr. Larry Armony from the Brimstone Hill Society, the St. Kitts Circuit Choir, and the Epsworth Maurice Hillier Memorial Junior School. Hundreds of people lined the streets of Bastyr as the funeral procession drove slowly through to Springfield Cemetery. Many wanted to get a final glimpse as the body of the late former governor was carried through his beloved city for the final time to his resting place. A city Soprobin knew all too well of its history and a development, having written about it in his now acclaimed history book, Historic Bastyr. He was a proponent of preserving the nation's history while learning valuable lessons from our past so as not to repeat them. Soprobin died on Sunday, March 12th at the JNF Hospital in Bastyr at the age of 80. Reporting for SKN Newsline, I'm Andre Huey. St. Martin, six-time Grammy Award winner Israel and Newbreed will be on our island April 8, 2017 for one night only. On Saturday, April 8, 2017, all roads lead to Festival Village where the sounds of Israel come alive. The tickets are $30 for adults and $15 for children under 13 and are available from Nature's Discount, Family Bookstore, Van Dorpedeen, Jeffrey's Auto Supplies and Orleans Beauty Cosmetics on the front side. At the gates, it's $40 for adults and $20 for children. Starting time, 7.30. Sharp. This event is a production of CFC Kingdom Promotions. Israel and New Breed, live on St. Martin. You can't miss this. Cabrin Embroidery is a professional embroidery screen print and graphics design studio in St. Martin. We produce high quality embroidery and screen printing projects using nothing but the finest material to ensure a lasting impression on your corporate and marketing wear. All work is produced using top brand clothing lines. Whether for personal or corporate use, we deliver a product you are proud to wear. Caribbean Embroidery in Phillipsburg, St. Martin. Visit our website www.caribbeanembroidery.com Yeah! Oh yeah! Ah! sha na 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 Oh yeah! Let's go! Everybody up inside the fed Cup full of rum and we soaking wet They asking what time we going on we don't know yet Cause I see a girl I want inside this vet And the way she whining, she moving in time She waistline exciting, girl where you been hiding Yeah And I want a piece of your wine darling So I come in up from behind and let me Wine on your bumper baby let me wine on it Give me a taste of your bumper, baby Let me sample it Just let me wine on your bumper, baby Let me wine on it Give me a taste of your bumper, baby Let me sample it Look trouble, look trouble, look trouble In the dance I tell you Look trouble, look trouble, look trouble In the jam I got Look trouble, look trouble, look trouble In the dance I tell you Look trouble, look trouble, look trouble